Right, this is uh, Jack Emmett, Jack Hart with Sandro Lucrezia, Unit 6, Plan and Prepare, Gym Based Exercise. Right lads, learning outcome 1 then we'll start off with Know how to plan and prepare Gym Based Exercise 1.1. 1. 1. Just, an just answer the question, I won't be reading it all out. Actually, I'll read it out for you. 1.1, explain the importance of careful and thorough planning and preparation for physical activity. Well, I'll give you a session on some structure, the reduction of injury, and it'll help your client reach his target that I set before you started. Alright, 1.2, outline the needs and potential of the clients, including reasons for and barriers to participation in the activity. Uh, different barriers can be, such as an injury, uh, different financial problems. Could be a medical problem. Anything else? Uh, other barriers could be uh, just work, work, work problems, and if for, for a female, it could be pregnancy. Good. One point three. Describe how to motivate clients to take part in exercise. A uh, good way to motivate clients is to give them a goal. Give them a target to try and reach. Good. Give them incentives, like uh, you get so far, you get like another free session or something like that. Yeah. And give them an enjoyable and varied session, so they won't always do the same thing. Fine. 1.4, describe <laughs> exercises that are safe and appropriate for clients, including alternatives to potentially harmful exercises. Uh, well, in the gym, a potentially harmful exercise could be, uh, especially for a beginner, Cover something such as a, a deadlift. Mm -hmm. Obviously, trying to work your lower back there. <coughs> so, uh, an alternative you could do that's much safer could be a prone cobra or a superman. Where obviously, it's just a body weight exercise where you're just laying on your front, lifting up your, lifting up your chest from your from your waist. Again, you're not using any heavy weight, so you're reducing. You do them good mornings as well. Yeah. You stood there. Good. Uh, another exercise you could do is a goblet squat instead of a back squat. Again, it's much safer instead of having such a heavy resistance on your back. You're just using a dumbbell in front of your chest. Good. 1.5, identify safe and effective alignment of exercise positions. Well, then, uh, to get your technique right in a squat, like getting down to 90, uh, 90 degrees with your legs, get straight back, and don't do any unnecessary movements, so don't lean forward or move your feet when you're doing it. Keep Fixed. Also, concentrate on the muscle groups you try to affect as well. So again, that's going back to no unnecessary, unnecessary movement. Just try to keep yourself nice and stabilised through your exercises. Good. 1.6. Describe how to plan to use a range of cardiovascular and resistance machines, including free weights, barbells, dumbbells, covers and benches. So you're going to try and work towards your client's uh, aims and goals using so the appropriate equipment and uh, use the correct health and safety procedures such as uh, using collars for barbells. Right, anything else? You want to, depending obviously the goals of the uh, what the client wants, you want to be using different intensities on different cardiovascular machines as well. Especially if you've got someone who's more interested on sprinting, you want to be doing much high intensity sprints on either the bike, roller or treadmill. Anything on the resistance machines? What are you different? Well, on your resistance machines, again, it's going to be, you're going to be changing maybe your, your rep range <coughs> or your weight and your weight, considering what your client wants with his muscular How endurance. Is, it's going to be what else could you do on a resistance machine a bit easier than, say, free weights to find out? It's stable, isn't it? Yeah, you can find, you can find sort of like, if, if you're a beginner especially, you can find it's kind of like the, the base level of how strong they're going to be. So, so what's the proper name for that then? Uh, like fitness testing on it, sort of testing on it. Yeah, or Mac, the one RM. Yeah, yeah. So a one rep max on it, so it'd be a bit easier yeah. doing on the. So, so what examples could you do? Uh, could you give? Well, if you wanted to, to find say, a one rep max. Say if you wanted to find your one rep max on your your bench press. Yeah. You can use just a chest press machine. Right, so good. it's obviously working the same muscle groups. Right. Ain't safe. Ain't safe. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, right, outcome two. Know how to collect and analyse relevant information. So, describe the 2.1. Describe the screening process and the factors which affect the ability to exercise. Uh, your screening process could be such as um, doing your PARQ, 
IQ forms and possibly some fitness testing as well to see the limitations of your client. Good. Anything else? Yeah, you do this so you can find any injuries or medical problems or in a female, maybe even pregnancy, which could uh, restrict you from doing certain exercises. Right, 2.2. 2. Sandro, uh, identify the information needed to plan gym based exercise and describe why this information is important. Well, do the park you and get your <coughs> client's aims and goals. Uh, work towards them. Uh, yeah. Same thing. You use the appropriate equipment that's that's there for them. So in, right. do, in doing this you can find all, all the restrictions again for the client and what, what for the obviously for their aims and goals you can find out what they want it to do so you're not doing a routine that's completely like nothing to do with what they're their aims or goals are, so you can be doing everything for your client and what the client wants and what they're able to do. Good. Identify the range of different methods that may be used to collect information, including questionnaire, interview, observation and physical measurements. Well, you do your PAQ. Uh, yeah. It's a standard. You can do various fitness tests to, to see it. To such as what? Such as uh, the 1RM or even... Well, the stage fitness tests. And sprinting tests that we did. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Illinois, yeah, it's been Illinois, yeah. Or asking the client personally, like an interview of how far they can go, or how far they're willing to go. Then, then what about physical measurements? Um, that is a back to that one red max. Yeah. I suppose you use the physical C, measurements, C rate of exertion as well on different exercises. To see how, see if you put someone on a certain bit of kit. Say so treadmill on a certain certain speed if you ask them for their perceived rate of exertion. You can see how hard And then, then what about on their actual body why well, why might be uh, do some like body measurements like yeah. the tape to see if they've lost any weight or gained weight, do the uh, skin, body fat skin calipers and body fat and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Right, good. Um things like BMI as well on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So two point four, identify reasons for temporary deferral of exercise. Financial issue, that something's gone Good. on. Uh, they can't afford to pay for it. Or they've just got an injury um, that's going to set them back for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Well, it's going to be, you can be, you work, <coughs> all, all different things. We work and restrict to that time that you can get to go to the gym. Yeah, yeah. you've got like an appointment to go somewhere. Good. 2.5, identify why it may be necessary to refer the client to another professional, well, to somebody else. They could need physio. Good. If someone injured a doctor, if someone is pregnant or a really bad injury, such as a break or something like that. Or maybe, you know, we haven't got any time and they need to see someone and we haven't got enough time. We were going on holiday or something. Might like not that. particularly be qualified to deal with the... Uh, the extent of the injury or the problem Good. that the client's faced with as well. Yep. Describe the purpose of the informed consent. Uh, if the client is underage, so uh, so the parent or oh, he'll know that uh, be allowed to do some heavy exercise and that there's a risk of injury. Mainly to keep keep the uh, keep keeps the gym or the company covered as well for if there is an injury. For someone who is maybe a little bit younger, yep. or underage, obviously just keeps the gym covered, yourself covered as a as the trainer and gym instructor, and also and also for the health and safety of the client. Yep. as well. Good. Two point seven. Outline the emergency procedures of the facility slash organisation. <coughs> so fire exits. Yep. And uh, some fire alarms, and uh, like a register and uh, sign in and sign out sheet. Right. That's fine. 2.8, explain the purpose of the physical activity readiness questionnaire or PARQ and how to record and interpret the information provided. 2.8. You understand the client's uh, limitations. Good. How much they can do. Yep. Uh, so what sort of limitations might a client have? Just give us a few examples. Like, you might be overweight or you might have 
come out of a recent in injury, so he might not be able to do all kinds of uh, age. So it's like, age. It's like if, a, if a client's had a history of uh, heart problems, mm -hmm. and they're not going to want to be doing anything too intense. It needs to all be low intensity. So from his park here, we can see this. So we yeah. won't be putting anyone at risk. So How yeah, might you go on, sir? Reverse back to health and safety as well. Yeah. <coughs> How might you record and interpret that information then? You could do it on a survey, like a <coughs> a questionnaire. Yeah. Uh, you can do it yourself through an interview as well. You could write details down on a computer. Keep it on a file. Each client have their own personal file. Yeah, through the park. Where might that be kept then? On the on the gym system, computer system might be kept in a log. In a file. Yeah, file in the cabinet. Yeah, that's safe. locked away. Right. Keep it confidential. Secure, yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, learn outcome four then. Know how to plan a safe and effective gym based exercise program with clients. So 4.1, explain how to identify and agree objectives for a program based on collected information. You're asking about the goals and what they want to do, how they want to look, basically, you know, how health issues make them fitter. Right. So you use your, you revert to your PAQ as well to see where you could have some limitations to what you can, your client can do, what you can put for your client in your routines. And again, you can use your fitness tests as well to do the same thing, to see what level your client's at, where you need to be starting your routine. So you're always doing something effective for your client. Good. 4.2, describe how to use <coughs> a range of equipment to achieve the client's goals. Well, you can vary between uh, the cardio uh, some free weights and resistance kit. So, for example, if someone wants to improve their fitness using free weights as well as cardiovascular equipment, using free weights in a circular, uh, circuit format. So you can do different exercise, but work in both muscular strength, but also the cardiovascular side of fitness. Good. 4.3, outline the health and environmental factors which can influence safety and group individual working space. Just want to make sure that in the gym or in the area that you're, that you're training your client, that all the equipment is properly maintained, all yep. safe. Everything's clean, everything's mopped up, and there's signs up if there's like a wet floor or like that. <coughs> and then again, the most importantly, probably making sure you the client, the client is fit and healthy, motivated. And, and motivated, and all right to do certain activities that you've got planned. So, say for instance, the Smith machine ain't working at a gym. What might you do? You put, put up a sign, uh, or out of order. You, 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 you laminate the sign, don't you? Yeah, you tie yeah. it on with string. Make sure you're informing clients as they're coming right. in as well. Good. Okay, so describe why it's important to agree goals with clients. Four point four. To make it more enjoyable for them. Yeah. Uh, so you're both on the safe wavelength, so you both know what the client wants to do. Yeah. And uh, you right. structure your sessions correctly. Uh, put it in a set structure, so it's so always designed. So everything's going to be 100% 100 beneficial towards your client then as well. Good. It's efficient. Efficient, good. 4.5, describe how to record plans in the required format. So how would you record a plan for a client, Sandro? So you've got a client, what might you do recording a plan? Record a plan? Yeah. When you set out a plan, you talk it with them. You talk about it with them, and if they agree that things are on there, that should be. Uh, then you go ahead and do the plan. So say they're doing a six-week programme, what might you... What sort of things might you set out in that plan for them? Well, you'd ask them about what they want to achieve in that six weeks. Yep. And like if they wanted to uh, gain strength in six weeks, you'd go up. You'd set like a week plan on one way, and then you on the next week you'd add a little bit more weight, add a little bit more weight. Or if they wanted to run further, you set them goals and. Uh, on the cardiovascular machines, make the high intensity uh, workouts, keep the heart going and uh, make them more fit. Right, okay. 4.6, outline risk assessment <coughs> slash management procedures. Uh, so again, you do the PAQ. Again, to see so risk assessment is a bit different. Well, yeah, you, but that's more for the centre. So... Park use more for the client, risk assessment's more for the centre. Right. Oh, uh, so again, you make sure that all uh, the equipment is safe, all uh, in good working order. Yep. That it's uh, all clean. All your fire exits are accessible. Yep. Your fire alarm's working as well. Good. 
all the machines are working, all the you know, cardio machines. You need to check them every morning. Yeah. Then if something wasn't wrong, what sort of management procedures might you have to follow? Well, you'd put a sign on the machine yeah. if it's not working, and then you'd let the manager know oh, you're superior. Yeah. Uh, and then they'll have a, tell someone if they can fix it, like the guy that owns the gym or the company Good. that owns the gym. Yeah. Uh, somebody will come in and fix fix it or replace it or just take it away. Right. Uh, good. 4.7. Explain the consequences of failing to manage health and safety. Again, here you can gain injury, so the client can get made injury or a uh, loss of client. So yep. they might think they don't want to come back if uh, we can't uh, keep the gym in good working order. It's going to give uh, give you yourself a bad reputation, possibly, and give the company a bad reputation. If because uh, a lot of a lot of gym and personal training has a lot to do with word of mouth. That's yep. where a lot of your client clientele comes from, and a lot of you, your, a lot you of you in the area in a in a stay like you free weights. If you leave them out, somebody goes over and you just free weights. Put yeah. the weights down, they could crush the hand. So you need to put everything back where it came from. So what might that lead to? A lawsuit. Yeah. So legal 